This video is based on a new meta heuristic optimization algorithm named as Archimedes optimization algorithm. We can use this algorithm to solve complex numerical optimization problems and to solve engineering design optimization problems. In this video, we will try to understand what is this algorithm all about, how it is working, various steps used in this algorithm, mathematical models to update agent's position in the search space, and how we can perform exploration and exploitation phases. First of all, as you can see here, Archimedes optimization algorithm is introduced in 2020. It is recently proposed physics-based metaheuristic optimization algorithm that is basically inspired by physics law named as Archimedes principle. This algorithm is based on Archimedes principle. It mimics what happens when objects of different weight and volume are immersed in a fluid. As this algorithm mimics Archimedes principle, so first we will try to understand all about Archimedes principle so that we can easily understand how this algorithm is working. When any body is placed inside fluid, upward force is exerted by the fluid on the body. This force is known as wind force and this whole process is known as buoyancy. According to Archimedes principle, when a body is immersed wholly or partially in a fluid, it loses its weight which is equal to the weight of the fluid displaced by the body. In the upcoming slides, we will try to understand Archimedes principle in more details. First, we will try to understand the basic key points. As we know, fluid does not have its own shape. It can take any shape and it flow under the action of applied force. So we can measure fluid pressure using this. That is the normal force acting on a unit surface area of the fluid. For example, you can see here body immersed in the liquid and here M is the mass of the body immersed in the liquid. D that is the liquid density. L you can see here that is the depth of a surface of body from the surface of the body. H that is body height. A is considered as area of upper and lower face. Now we will calculate the pressure acting on body upper face and lower face. First we will calculate the pressure acting on the body upper face. So pressure acting on the body upper face is equal to the length you can see here L length of upper face of the body from the surface into liquid density into acceleration due to gravity so pressure acting on the upper body is p1 that is l dg next you can see the pressure acting on the body lower face so here you can see the pressure acting on the lower body face is length body length plus height is equal to the length of upper face of the body from the surface plus body height into density into acceleration due to gravity. Now we have the pressure acting on the body upper face and lower face. Now we will calculate the force acting on the body upper face and lower face. Force acting on the body upper face is denoted as F1 and force on the lower face of body is F2. We know that pressure is equal to the normal force acting on a unit surface of the liquid. So here you can see force is equal to pressure into area. So here F1 is equal to P1 that is the pressure acting on the upper face of the body into area. And value for P1 we have LdG. Next you can see the force acting on the lower face of the body that is pressure into area and lower 
body pressure is denoted with P2, so P2 into area. Now we will calculate the net force on the body that is F2 minus F1 and you can see we obtain the net force this one A H D G. As we know volume is measured as amount of space occupied by the body so here volume is equal to area that is the space occupied by body into body height so here you can see we have a h so we will replace a h with v that is the volume and d is the density and g is the acceleration due to gravity or we can say f is equal to mg that is the weight of the liquid displaced. Now you can see here we have different laws when body immersed in the liquid. Different forces act on the body, up thrust and weight. Up thrust is the liquid weight displaced by the body and weight that is the body weight. So here we have different cases. First case you can see here if the up thrust is greater than body weight, body will float in the liquid. So if body weight is less than up thrust, body will float. Second case, if up thrust is equal to body weight, it means body will be in the equilibrium state. Third case, you can see up thrust is less than body weight, it means body weight is greater than the liquid weight displaced by the body so in this case body will sink in the liquid archimedes optimization algorithm main idea is to attain equilibrium state that is second case when the force is equal to body weight then body will be in equilibrium so here the main idea for this algorithm is to attain the equilibrium state for the each object in the population. So this algorithm main idea is to reach a point where objects are naturally buoyant. It means net force is equal to zero that is the equilibrium state. And it is assumed that objects are immersed in the same liquid and each one is trying to reach the equilibrium state. As you can see here, different objects are immersed in the same liquid and they are trying to reach the equilibrium state. Now you can see different steps are used in this algorithm to find out the optimal solution for the engineering design optimization problems and numerical optimization problems. Now we will try to understand this algorithm step by step. First we will initialize all the important parameters for this algorithm. For example population size. Here population size means total number of search agents and here in the population we have objects. Suppose population size is 55. It means we have 55 objects. Next we have maximum iteration, it means total number of iterations, how many times the loop will repeat and after that it will display the optimal solution. Dimension, that is the search space dimension, lower bound, upper bound, that is the search space boundary and we have constant for this algorithm. Second step you can see here. Now we will initialize the population for the n agents in the search space. First we have population size 55. Now we will initialize the position for the agents in the search space. This object you can see now in the population we have 15 objects and each object have different density, acceleration and volume. As each object have different density, acceleration and volume. Now we will initialize their densities, volume and acceleration. So here we have total objects. 
after that for each object we will initialize volume acceleration and density here volume acceleration and density is randomly initialized as we have the virtual environment we have virtual objects and you can see the virtual search space so we will initialize randomly the density volume and acceleration for each object you can see the rand is the random value that is normally distributed random value within 0 and 1 after that in step 3 we will calculate the fitness value for each object and select the best among all once the fitness value for the object is calculated they will select the object with the best fitness value and the best object is determined by joining best volume, best density and best acceleration. After that you can see here algorithm main loop started in step 4. After that we will set the now we will set the counter is 1 that is we will start from first iteration. Now we will check the stopping criteria here. So we have maximum iteration 1000 and current iteration right now 1. So this condition is true as current iteration is less than maximum iteration. Now we will move to the next step. The next step we will update the density and the volume for each object. As objects in the search space are moving so we will update their density and volume. So here using this equation we can update the density for each object and we can update the volume for each object here t is the current iteration i denote the object and density and this one is the new density that we will use in the next iteration new volume and then you can see this is random value that is normally distributed within 0 and 1 and this is the best density, best volume. Next you can see here in step 8 we will update the transfer factor and decreasing density. Here D is the density factor, TF that is the transfer factor or transfer operator. See here different objects are immersed in the fluid and in the beginning the collision between objects occur. And after a period of time, objects will attain the equilibrium state. So in this algorithm, main idea is to attain the equilibrium state for each object. So in real life, when you will place different objects in the same fluid, first they will collide with each other and after a period of time, they will attain the equilibrium state. So in this algorithm, this behavior is implemented using using transfer factor transfer factor is used to implement this behavior so as the collision between the objects will occur until they obtain the equilibrium state and we are using the transfer factor to switch the exploration and excitation phases and next we have the density factor density factor it means density decreasing factor that is used to find out the global solution density factor allow archimedes optimization algorithm to find out optimal solution as the density decrease with time and here time means total number of iterations so here density will decrease with the number of iterations using this we can calculate the transfer factor here current iteration minus maximum iterations divided by maximum iterations and density factor here you can see equation is same minus current iteration divided by maximum iterations now we will perform the exploration phase and the exploitation phase for this algorithm here we will check the transfer factor value that we computed in step 8 here if the transfer factor value is less than or equal to 0.5, if this condition is true, then we will perform exploration phase. It means the collision between objects occur 
If this condition is not true, we will perform the exploitation phase. It means there is no collision between the objects. Now you can see here in step 9, if this condition is true, then it means there is collision between objects. So we will update the objects acceleration and normalize actually in the beginning the collision between objects occurred and to implement this behavior we will select any object randomly and we will select the random material here random material you can see mr so here you can see how we can update the object acceleration using this equation here this is the density for the randomly selected object this is the volume and acceleration for randomly selected object and here you can see density and the volume for the object so here we have two objects one is randomly selected another is the object position so here we are trying to implement the collision between two objects after that we will calculate the normalized acceleration normalized acceleration is used to calculate the percentage of change it means so here it means the percentage step each object will take is calculated using this equation and the values for u and l that is the normalization range values are fixed value for u we have 0 0.9 and l is 0 0.1 after that we will update object position using this equation here c1 is the constant and the value for this constant is 2 rand is any random value and this is object position and this is object new position and this is normalized acceleration that we calculated here in this equation after that you can see this is the density factor that we computed here in step 8 and this is the randomly selected object and this is object position now you can see the condition here if this condition is true then we perform the collision between the objects if this condition is not true we will perform then there is no collision between the objects so here we will perform the exploitation phase in the exploitation phase again we will update object acceleration and normalize acceleration and we will update the flag direction and after that we will update the objects position so here you can see we have the same equations that we used before so using this we will update the object acceleration and you can see this value is used here in the normalized acceleration here flag direction means the object direction in which direction the object will move so using this we will calculate the flag direction value and after that we will update the agent's position and here this is the best solution position and you can see flag direction it means the direction for the object c2 is the constant and value is 6 rand is any random value this is the normalized acceleration that is computed here in this equation now d is the decreasing density and t that is the transfer factor and here this is the best solution position now you can see we are calculating the values for the acceleration if the acceleration value is high it means the object is far away from the global solution the acceleration value is decreased with time if the acceleration value is lower it means object is in the exploitation phase that's how the balance between the exploration and exploitation phases is maintained if the balance between exploration and exploitation phase is not maintained algorithm easily stuck in the local optima so in this algorithm author use normalized acceleration to maintain the balance between the 
acceleration and acceleration phase if the acceleration value is higher it means object is far away from the global solution if this value is lower it means object is in the exploitation phase so first we will initialize algorithm parameters and then we will initialize objects position in the search space and each object have different density acceleration and volume so for each object we will calculate the density volume and acceleration after that we will select the best among all by calculating the fitness values for each object after that main loop is started and then we will update the density and the volume for each object and after that transfer factor is used to switch between exploration and exploitation phase and density factor is used to calculate object density that is decreasing with time and then we will perform the exploration and exploitation phases for objects if transfer factor value is less than or equal to 0.5 then we will perform the collision between objects that is the exploration phase as they will collide with each other it means they can move in the search space and that's how they can find out the optimal solution if this condition is not true it means there is no collision between the objects and the equilibrium value is attained and we will update the position for objects after that we will calculate the fitness value for each object and again we will select the best among all and then we will increment the counter and we will check the loop here again whether the current iteration is less than or equal to maximum iteration or not if this condition is true again then we will repeat this loop else we will display the best